In his diary, which was discovered by his son after his death, Admiral Byrd tells an extraordinary story. Admiral Byrd heard there was an entrance to the center of the Earth through the South Pole. And he took planes into the South, under the South Pole. And when he did that, he discovered that as he flew over the pole, suddenly he's looking at things that shouldn't be there. I mean, it was temperate. He and his squadron flew under the Earth, into the Earth. It turns into this lush and green area, and he can't even believe his eyes. But that's just the beginning of his extraordinary story. He tells how all of a sudden he starts to see a shimmering rainbow city that's made of crystal. His airplane is taken control of when he suddenly sees these flying disc-shaped objects around him that lead him to the ground, whereupon he's escorted into a cavernous type of an area where he meets a being he refers to as the master in his diary. The master tells him that they're highly disappointed in what humans are doing with nuclear weapons, and they really are concerned about what is going on on the surface of the planet. They tell Admiral Byrd that they hope that humanity will ultimately stop this. Admiral Byrd's story is congruent with the stories that we hear from numerous uh, accounts of angelic or extraterrestrial type beings that are very concerned about what humanity is doing with nuclear weapons. We are ultimately not just going to destroy ourselves, but could harm our planet, which is their world as well. Does it reveal not only that there are highly advanced beings living inside the Earth, but also that they are monitoring what happens on the surface. Admiral Byrd was eager to share his story, but was ordered to remain silent. Byrd comes back after this experience. He is taken to a government compound where he is told that he is never to speak of this publicly and that everything he says is, is classified. Could Admiral Byrd's story point to a profound connection between the ancient traditions of strange beings living inside the Earth and the modern-day UFO phenomenon. Ancient astronaut theorists say yes and believe we may be fast approaching the time when we will find ourselves face-to-face -face with the beings of inner Earth. You know that before winter, millions of birds and insects in the most extreme latitudes fly not towards the equator, but towards the poles? And that those animals, when given tracking devices, lose their tracking signal? Did you know that mosquitoes in the northernmost landmass, Greenland, are so large and aggressive, they can take out a caribou calf? And did you know that explorers at the South Pole have reported that after a certain latitude, the sub-zero temperatures suddenly rise dramatically, yielding green, iceless land areas and lakes? This strange evidence of warmer regions all indicate that the North and South Pole may hold secrets beyond the idea of Santa Claus. In fact, they support a theory about Earth that some of the most celebrated geologists and astronomers have believed, that Earth is a spherical, spacious planetary body with enormous continent-sized caverns deep within it and large entrances miles across at the North and South Pole. They say inner Earth has water, oceans, and luminosity, and that it sustains not only plants and animals, but intelligent life. If this sounds like heresy, lay aside what you think you know, and we'll show you the evidence, the scientists, the legends, and testimonies behind the inner Earth theory so that you can see why it may be the most game-changing information ever concealed from common knowledge. That miles beneath your feet are ideal conditions for a life-sustaining and inhabitable inner Earth. Who wasn't taught that gravity is what makes an apple fall? We've believed this for roughly three or four hundred years, since Isaac Newton defined it and its relationship to mass. Well, in 2017, Two neutron stars collided and proved, indeed, it's not a force. It's actually a distortion in space-time. According to Einstein, an apple falls from a tree because the apple's responding to a curvature of space-time caused by the planet's mass. There's no attractive force called gravity. 
Fair to say that's a massive paradigm shift. So if we were wrong about gravity, could we be wrong about other theories, particularly those that involve it? How we measure Earth's mass. Today, the Cavendish experiment measures the mass of one object based on its tug to another. But even before the redefining of gravity, this theory had flaws. The cliffs leading down to the entrance are so steep, he cannot explore it further. Two decades later, the British Cave Research Association finally explores the cave. What the team discovers is astounding. It is the largest underground chamber on the planet. It's not just a cave. It's an actual world in Vietnam. Inside this cave, it's 40 stories high. There's actually an ancient forest, a flowing water, not just a puddle or a stream, but an actual river. Inside the cave is an entire growing ecosystem, and it's so deep that it looks like it's an entrance to a whole other reality. According to area residents, what's most notable about Son Dung Cave are the strange creatures that are believed to dwell within it. Local residents describe seeing reptilian-type humanoid beings emerging from the Song Dong Cave. And they believe that they actually live deep inside this cave. While it may sound too incredible to be true, there have been reports that during the Vietnam War in the 1970s, U.S. soldiers encountered what they described as upright lizards inhabiting caves. And accounts of reptilian beings existing in underground caverns can be found all across the globe in Cusco, Peru. Throughout Peru and around Cuzco particularly, there are many, many stories of a tunnel system that has something to do with serpent deities, which they call the Amaru. The Peruvian authorities themselves decided it was too dangerous, so they looked for all of the entrances they could around Cuzco and they sealed them up. And this is a well-known story within Peruvian history. While there have been many reports from around the world, of human-like reptilians. There is another inner earth entity described in the Zohar that is even more commonly witnessed in modern times. According to Zoharic literature, there are beings inside the earth having large black eyes and a nose that leaves only two dark holes on the face. There is a lot of evidence that these beings that we think are coming from another planet are not coming from another planet. They're coming from inside our own Earth. The black-eyed entities, commonly referred to as greys by ufologists, are the beings most often reported by alleged alien abductees, many of whom claim to have been taken aboard saucer-shaped craft. Could it be that the so-called flying saucers so often reported are not coming from outer space, but inner Earth. This notion is supported by numerous accounts of UFOs that are seen disappearing into the landscape, and sometimes even flying directly into mountains. Might not be found in the heavens, but deep within our own planet. One of the most consistent themes that we find in ancient cultures when we travel around the world is the idea that there is another world, another Earth inside of the planet. Within Buddhism, there's stories of a place called Agartha or Agarti, which is an inner world. And it's inhabited, too, by people, and that they are an advanced race, and even that they have uh, trains and vehicles that are moving through this inner Earth. Is it possible that an other Earth can be located within the confines of our own planet? Historically, underground realms were not relegated to mere mythology. Well-respected scientists and mathematicians have long speculated about a theory that became known as Hollow Earth. The scientist Edmund Haley is most famous for Haley's comment. made a lot of unusual statements including talking about what he called a new kind of craft that could fly from pole to pole. And when Bird got back to the United States, he was brought back to Washington where he was questioned very heavily about his statements. And allegedly he was told to stop talking about this. Is it possible that entrances to another world can be found at the Earth's poles? And if so, did Admiral Byrd actually passed through one of them. 